Hello, so I've got a new film emulation Lightroom preset pack out. It's the first one in two and a half years, so I am very sorry to all those people who kept asking me to release a new one. I have been crafting these ones for a very long time, but they're finally ready for release. And this pack kind of follows on from my Kodak Portra pack in that it's designed for working professionals and for artists rather than for creating very overt retro looks like my Cine still in my Kodachrome packs and my Aerochrome presets. But this pack is significantly different from my portrait pack in that I've got a new process for creating color profiles. And this process more accurately represents the tonal values of film, specifically skin tones. Because while I'm shooting on stocks like 400H and on Portra, I notice a really nice kind of flattening out of the tones. You get a really nice smoothness in the hues and tonal values. And one of the troubles with Lightroom is that while it's a very powerful photo editing tool, it still limits the user by the controls it gives them. Yes, you can change the saturation of the reds and the saturation of the orange, but what if you want a bump in saturation in a hue that's in between those two colors? And with things like skin tones, those kind of details are really important. And this is where color profiles come into it. And so all the color stocks I've replicated here and a lot of the black and white ones have dedicated color profiles that I've created that are called up by the preset. And this lays the foundation that the preset then builds upon because you can't create a full film look with just a color profile. And I've also utilized some, some of the new uh, AI features in Lightroom to create a range of tools that work alongside the preset. But I should probably just stop talking about these now and just get on with showing you. So let's jump into Lightroom. So let's start in our develop module. And if I go to preset six film pro, these are all the presets here. The ones that start with an asterisk are the tools, little recipes that work in addition to the presets. And the presets are down here. Uh, we've got black and white that start with BW and the color ones that start with C. And all these are new presets. They're all new versions of these film stocks. Nothing is repeated from before. So let's go straight in. And I'm gonna make it no secret that my favorite one, my favorite emulation is Fuji Color Pro 400H, but they're all good. So let's start with this one. And we can see straight away kind of what that's done. We've got that softening of the skin tones that I was talking about. So let me show you how some of these work up here. This dull background is a tool that you can add and you see it will dull the background there. You can make it a bit subtle like that. And then I got a vignette on too. And these are all, all up here in the masks. So you can turn these on and off. That's where we were, that's where we are now. And these tools work independently of the presets. So I can change the preset below and you'll still have these up here. So I've changed that to a portrait 400, up the exposure a little bit, 160, portrait 800, 400H. These remain here because they are all made as masks, which sit over the top of presets. Take a very different picture, like this picture in the tube here. So we could put a pan F black and white and we can add a bit of a contrast boost to that. Or we could add a Velvia. Or we could add a Kodachrome 64, which will give you that kind of Kodachrome look. Now, if you want to make this look more 35 mil, we've got these up here. We've got 35 mil look one, two, and three. So if I put look two on, um, you can see I'm um, putting a vignette on as well, maybe. That's where we were, that's where we are. It has a kind of 35 mil aesthetic now. So we've got this one, which is just a basic 35 mil look. This, which fades it a bit and gives it a bit of green tint. Of course, you can turn this down a bit if you want. We've got look three, which is a bit of a more of a magenta -y tint. And then if we go to the pan F, we can then put a black and white 35 mil look on it. And of course you can turn that up a little bit. And the more you turn it up, the more it starts to look a bit more like a photocopy or a really soft looking 35 mil, very grainy. So take another picture in the tube and I'll just show you what the city still does. And I can show you how the actions work. So we've applied the city still to that. Maybe I'll do a vignette as well. Now I'm gonna Command E or Control E on a PC to take you into Photoshop. Now in Photoshop, we've got these two actions here, Halation Action 1 and Halation Action 2. They are two parts of the same thing. So we'll play Action 1, then that's done its thing, and now it tells you to paint over the lights and play Action 2. So I'm just gonna paint over the lights here, 
so it doesn't need to be too accurate now these are reflections now with cine still reflections of lights don't have halation only the actual light sources themselves so now we play action two and that will create some halation which you can then change the opacity of if you want to make it very prominent or very subtle so we can now hop back into lightroom and there we've got our halation so that's where we were that's where we are. So this Cine Still emulation is a lot more subtle than my previous Cine Still pack. Same with the Kodachrome. It's more nuanced, it's more delicate in a way. It's made to be less of a feature of the photo and more to aid a professional workflow. So that was shot on a Leica Q2. So let's go to something different. This one was shot on a Fujifilm X-E3. So we'll give this an HP5, dull the background, or we could try a Portra 160. And one thing we can do with that is we can add a bit of a contrast boost. Yeah, that's where we were. That's where we are. This is a portrait of my friend Mark, Mark Howe. He's a good photographer. Uh, check out his work. Um, he's very good. Um, I'm gonna put a portrait 800 on him. Um, I don't think much else needs to be done to that. See the way it sort of smooths out the skin tones. It's nice like that. Actually, let's take a look at this photo, which is a photo that Mark took uh, of a swimmer. So let's have a look at Portra 160 and then we'll dull the background and add a vignette. Now that just took us a couple of seconds, but it's taken us from there to there. And if we look at kind of, that's the digital kind of rendition of the skin tones. This was taken on a Nikon D800, by the way. And that has just sort of softened it out, giving it that portrait sort of soft look. The reason it's such a popular portrait stock. It's another photo Mark took. So let's have a look here. Let's give her a Kodachrome 64. We'll dull the background again. This dull background is really one of my favorites. I mean, obviously it looks really extreme if you do that, but she really does stand out a bit of a vignette that's where we were and that's where we are now if you just look at how she pops out but then look at also the kind of Kodachrome colors that you get you get those dark blacks and those bluey greens so if we take a look at this photo here of this little kid just sat by a stream let's add a portrait 400 and immediately we can see those sort of portrait 400 colors in more bluey greens the kind of more warm skin tones Dull the background and we'll add a vignette, maybe just up the exposure very slightly. And we've gone from there to there. It's only taken us a few seconds, but just the improvement we've got just from that to that. I'm just finding these presets so useful. This woman here, uh, 400H, that's nice. 800Z maybe, 160C, that's nice. To a dull background and a bit of a vignette. Look how much she sort of just pops out now. Let's just up the exposure a bit. Yeah. Okay, so this one was shot on a Canon R5 and I can explain a bit now about why I didn't include profiles in the last preset pack and how I've overcome that now. So if we look at the profile here, it says camera standard. If we go to Adobe, it becomes very washed out. And I don't know why Canon have done this, because Nikon don't do it, Fujifilm don't do it, Leica don't do it, no other brand does this. And so when I use bespoke color profiles, the Canon shots look a bit washed out. So if we were to go Portra 400 for this, he looks a bit washed out, but I've got this color boost now. So there we go, we're boosting the color, we can boost the contrast a little bit as well. Let's take that exposure down a little bit. 160 now we've got that color boost by adding this over the top of your preset so let's dull the background we've gone from that to that let's look at a studio style shot looks good but you can see all this sort of digital tonal rendition there if we just add that it just sort of softens it out so there's a shot of my daughter jumping in the sea so let's look at this one with a maybe an astia 100f that's nice just dull the background down i've got this enhanced sky which uh, makes the sky kind of bluer and darker i think we'll just put that a bit on there a bit of a vignette that's just really working for me 
boost the contrast just a little bit with the contrast boost. But that's where we were and that's where we are now. Just look at the difference there. How those tones have just been kind of brought together in a real filmy way. Let's use an HP5 for this. Uh, we'll enhance the sky and that should make it a bit darker. Just pull that up a little bit. Sharpen it, add a vignette, boost the contrast, maybe remove the grain. Maybe we want to add a frame just around that. That's just looking nice. <laughs> right, so you've got a lot of colour in this shot. It's a shot of a pier, so I'm going to use my favourite one again, my 400H. And oh, just look at those colours. I had a bit of a contrast boost, colour boost as well. Mark again, Mark Howe. Um, give him a Vista 200. So a couple of guys on the south bank here with bikes without front wheels. So what we're going to do, let's do a Portra 160. 400 maybe, Portra 400, that's nice. Dull the background, vignette, a bit of a contrast boost, just a little bit of one, turn that down a little bit. Color boost, exposure up a little bit. So that's where we were, that's where we are now. Maybe if we change that. So that's got a bit more personality, that one. But the portrait is a nice and sort of neutral. Portrait 800 is quite nice too here. But if you look at how his skin tone is just sort of popping a bit more in his jumper, and this this overexposed pillar here is now just a bit more visible, it just has that softer range of tones and more sort of filmy colours. So there'll be a link in the description to download these. When you download them, you'll get this zip file here. If you unzip that, you will get a folder. And in that folder, there will be two other folders. The JW Preset 6 Film Pro, this contains all the presets. The JW Presets Frames, this is a set of presets that adds sort of film frames onto your images. I include this with all my presets, that's why I put it in here. And you've got this action file here for Photoshop. For those of you with Photoshop who want to add a halation to the Cine Still emulation that you'll find in here. So to install these presets in Lightroom Classic, you open your develop module and click this little plus here next to your presets tab and go to import presets. Here they are. To install these presets in Adobe Lightroom and therefore the mobile app and any tablet apps, you need to go into Lightroom on your desktop and go to file, import profiles and presets. Once they're in here, they will sync to your mobile app, your tablet apps, as long as you are signed in to Creative Cloud and you have a Creative Cloud subscription. Unfortunately, I can't provide these as DNGs. They're too complex for that. They use profiles. They use features that DNGs don't support. Um, so you can't have them for the mobile app alone. You can only use them on the mobile app if you are a Creative Cloud subscriber. To install these presets in Photoshop, it gets a little bit more complicated. You need to open up an image, then go to your Camera Raw filter. Once you're in your Camera Raw filter, click this little icon here, which will take you to your presets menu. Then click this little ellipsis here, not this one, this one, and then go to Import Profiles and Presets. But for some reason, you can't import the presets themselves. What you need to do is import the whole zip file and then they will import. I don't know why they've done that. It's just the way it is. And to install the actions, you go to your actions menu. If you can't see it, go to window and make sure that actions is checked there. And then you go to this little menu icon here and go to load actions. And then you can import that there. And then you've got the two actions there for the halation. So as I mentioned before, there's a link down in the description if you want to download these. And if you do, I want to thank you very much because that's what supports this channel and enables me to keep making videos. I'll be back soon with a new video. And until then, I will see you next time. Goodbye.